give us a little bit of a show, I think. That's that's right. That's the that's right. That's the intent. All right. Uh, let me share my screen quickly. Okay. Can you see my screen or? Not yet. Hmm. Ah, got it. Okay, now it's coming. Okay, now you should see one uh, big terminal window, and I'm, I'm guessing Chris. Right, the your terminal window. All right. Um, okay, uh, so first of all, um, just to let you know that I'm recording this, um, so you're going to be in video, smile. Um, and I'm going to put this uh, put this recording or put the screencast uh, somewhere on YouTube where where you can see it. Is is there a way for you to mute because I'm getting an echo from the other end? I'm not sure where from. I think KT. Yeah, possible. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about ways to get the stack installed um, onto your system. So. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm still getting an awful echo from someone. It's whoever is... We're trying to mute this, but it's muting the sound output as well as the input. Yeah, I think it's just us. Yeah, yeah, it's just us. Yeah. Chris, can you mute him? Yeah, I can. I can mute people. I don't know what happened. If I mute somebody on the phone, they might not be able to mute them, unmute themselves. So if you're having a problem, then use the text message. I'll mute everybody. Okay, that that seems to have uh, that seems to have worked. All right, so uh, I'm going to be talking about how to get the stack installed on your system, how to get LSSD software installed in your system. Uh, so there are a number of different ways to do that. Um, the official way to install the LSSD stack is from source, so to build everything from source. Uh, the instructions for that are on dm.lssd.org. That is by far the most flexible way to do it. Um, it's useful for developers. It makes it very easy for you to um, pull in new changes from Git and, and rebuild uh, if you're chasing bugs. But it is a problem and a, uh, and a, and a, and a um, barrier to entry for someone who just needs to install it to start using the stack. And so a number of people have contributed binary builds. So there are a few different ways to get binaries on your system without having to build everything. There's a the CERN VMFS system that uh, Fabio Hernandez uh, put together. Um, so if I, let me see, I have it in here. Um, so it's in Fabio's GitHub page. Uh, you can see all the details and pluses and minuses of that system. There's also a set of Docker containers that Andy Connolly, uh, I think, and, and the, the Sims group put together for the um, LSSD Science Collaborations meeting on observing strategy. Um, you can read more about that at, at this URL. And again, uh, this is recorded so you can, you can grab the URL later on. But the thing that I'm going to be talking about today is a way to install the stack using uh, Conda packages or using the Anaconda Python software distribution. And the, what I'm going to go, be going through essentially is what's, what's written in this gist. Um, the, the URL is kind of long and, and unwieldy, but if you go to ls.st slash k2i, that will get you there. So ls.st slash k2i. Um, so just a very brief introduction for those who have never used uh, or seen Anaconda. What is Anaconda? Um, Anaconda is it's a distribution of Python uh, uh, built and distributed by a company called Continuum IO. It's free. Um, I think it's BSD licensed, so it's 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 very very free, and you can do whatever you want with it. The nice thing about Anaconda is that um, you download this one big um, uh, binary blob. So in this case, what is this? Um, about 300 or 400 megabytes. Um, you unzip that, you get Python, you get uh, an order of 300 packages, 300 most useful packages of Python, and you're ready to go in minutes. 
Uh, a lot of people are using Anaconda. It's become de facto standard in the data science community. So making the stack distributable through Conda is, is actually very useful because if you don't have Anaconda Python right now in your machine, it's very likely that you will have it over the next few years. Um, now, Anaconda actually has two distributions. One is Anaconda. Uh, that comes with the 300 packages that I just mentioned. There's another distribution called Miniconda, which just gets you the bare minimums, such as Python, and etc. So if I type Miniconda, here we go. So this here is Miniconda. Um, the nice thing about Miniconda is you just install a very tiny limited distribution. Um, it only has Python, and then after that, you use uh, the, the Conda installer to install the, the packages that you care about. Um, the, the upside to that is that uh, I can do this demo much quicker than if I use just Anaconda. So I'm going to be using Miniconda here, and also to demonstrate that when you install the stack with Conda, it will pull in all the dependencies that it needs. Um, it, it, it knows um, about them uh, by default, so you don't have to worry about whether you've installed uh, this package or that package. So I'm going to be running this on LSST dev. Uh, that is a Linux machine. ETC Red Hat release. So that is a CentOS uh, 6 machine. Um, as I'll, I'll mention in the end, uh, these binaries should work on anything uh, that's that's more recent than CentOS 5, um, including CentOS 5, and as well as on Mac OS 10.9 and 10.10. Okay, so let's do this. So I will go from scratch. So mkdir uh, conda demo. Um, just create a directory for, for this entire thing go into the directory and first thing I'm going to do is to download oops sorry about that first thing I'm going to do is to download and install Miniconda and you can do that by going to that web page and clicking on the appropriate installer you will want the 64-bit installer for um, either Mac OS or Linux depending on what you're running we don't have 32-bit binaries um, we don't have binaries for Windows either I'm not sure if anyone's surprised by that so I'm going to pull that installer. It's only 40 megabytes or so, and then I'm going to install Miniconda. And so it's the usual license. Yes, of course I've read it. Then it asks you where to install it. I'm going to install it into this directory that, that I just created. And we wait a few seconds. Um, so the other thing that it asks you, is, asks you is, do you want to add it to your path in your bash RC? I typically don't do that because I want to control my path um, um, as necessary. And but if I don't do that, then I need to to add add it to my path um, every time I want to run it. So that's what I do here. And there we go. So if I now say Conda, or if I say Python, if I look at which Python I'm, I'm, I'm working with, um, you will see that it's in the Miniconda 2 directory, so that's the Miniconda Python. And if I say Conda, which is the, the, the package manager for, for Anaconda, um, you will notice that Conda exists as well. Okay, so now I have my Miniconda distribution. If I say Conda list, it will tell me which packages I have installed in that distribution. By default, as I said, Miniconda comes with the bare minimum. So it's essentially it's Python and a, and a bunch of uh, support libraries. Um, I can see which packages are available for me to install. I can say conda search. That will contact the servers. Uh, that will contact uh, Continuum servers and, and get me the list of packages. You'll notice many, many of them with, with different versions. I can say conda search dash dash names only to see just to get just a list of packages and if you care about how many of them are there I can pipe that to WC and it's 480 packages. So this is what's in the, this is the nice thing about conda. It 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 really packages a ton of things with that uh, that people care about when analyzing data. 
Um, these are not just Python packages. There's R in there. There are R libraries. There, there are many other things. And in addition to these packages, you can still use pip to install um, uh, Python packages of your choice. Good. So how do we use conda to install things? I can say, if I say conda list, there's only Python here, for example. I want IPython. I can say conda install IPython. Asks me to confirm, so it gets IPython, it gets everything that IPython depends on, and off we go. So this is very similar to the way every package manager out there runs. Um, it's actually very similar to Yum on, on Red Hat. Um, good. So the the thing with with Conda, and and by the way, just to demonstrate that I have IPython now, I can say IPython, and there it is, IPython 4.0. Um, now, if I do conda search lsst, I get nothing. And the answer for that is because, of course, lsst software is not um, yet included in uh, conda's uh, default repositories. So not everyone gets lsst out of the box. The way conda finds packages and downloads packages is by looking at, at different URLs, which it calls channels. By default, there's only the continuums channel that it that it consults, that it looks at. It, to make it uh, to tell it where to look for LSST packages, we need to define the LSST channel. So to see which channels we have defined, I can say conda config dash dash get channels. The answer is we don't have any channel defined right now. And now I will add the LSST channel, and this is the important bit. So when you want to install, when you want to enable Conda to know about LSST repositories, you will have to tell it Conda config dash dash add channels, and then give it this URL. Now in this case, um, it's it's uh, this URL ends in slash stable. This is the channel where I have uh, the most recent uh, released build, so v11 of the DM code and the Sims code. Uh, there will also be other channels, such as slash dev, where where kind of more development releases are going to be going going out. And um, you will, I, 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 these are the sorts of things where if you if you need a particular um, feature that's only in the development release, you will go, you will add that channel and and build from it. Uh, for now, um, I'm just going to demonstrate uh, how, how to use uh, what happens with the stable channel or what code is there is on the stable channel, but there's nothing different with any other channel. You can add as many of them as you want. So I say conda add channel. Now if I look at which channels I have, it tells me that I have my um, um, LSST channel and there's also the channel called defaults. Um, once you add a channel, it, it starts showing this default channel uh, for some reason. Okay, there's nothing magical about what I just did. What these command, what this command did was to just uh, populate a file called uh, .conda.rc in your home directory. If you want to forget about all channels or all customizations to conda, just delete that file and it'll go away. Um, good. So now if I do conda search lsst, there we go. So now, now I see the entire stack. If Conda sees the entire stack, you'll see many, many packages in there. Um, when you say Conda search LSST, it shows you all the packages that are in there, but typically there are a few that you really need to know about, and they will pull in all the dependencies that, that they need. Um, one of them is called LSST apps. So if I say Conda search LSST apps, this is a top level, a meta package that will pull in all LSST science pipelines. So image differencing, code addition, single frame processing, um, everything that, that's related to science pipeline processing, will, you'll get when you, when you install uh, LSST apps. Another one to know about is LSST distrib. If you, if you install LSST distrib, it will pull everything that LSST apps has, plus the middleware to run all of that on clusters. Um, for now, it does not include the database, but ultimately, I think it will include the database as, as well. The idea with LCC is trib is um, that you, you install that and you get literally everything. Um, for the Sims group, 
the another important package is going to be sims math. So if I look at, if I search for, oops, what did I do? Uh, LSSD sims math. If I search for sims math, here it is. Uh, that will get you the uh, metrics analysis framework. And if you want all of sims, you install LSSD sims. And now when I said LSSD, search LSSD sims, it gave me every, all the packages that um, begin with LSSD sims. Um, that's just the default behavior. I can add a dash F switch, which means match only the full name, and we'll return the LSSD sims uh, package. Okay, so those are the four, I think, most important packages to know about. LSSD apps, LSSD ship, LSSD sims math, and LSSD sims. Depending on what you're doing, you may want uh, some or all of those. Um, there are, there's one other useful thing. Um, you can think of this as uh, more than just um, LSST code because, for example, there's also Galson in there. And Galson is not that difficult to compile, but it's not easy either way. I, it's not easy either. So um, if you need Galson, you may just want to grab a binary from here. Um, Okay, now let's actually go and do that. The way to install thing, things is to say conda install and then give it the packages that you want installed. So in this case, I'll say conda install LSST apps, LSST sims. And when I hit enter, it will go and download all the packages um, and install them. The, 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 the difficulty for this presentation is that it takes uh, about five minutes. Um, it's still better than a couple of hours of building. Um, so th this is, it just downloads and installs the binaries, but it's still five minutes, so I'm just going to skip that and I'm going to cheat a little. I'm going to show you what the output would have been if I ran install. And this is what the output would have looked like. So it would, it would find all the LSST packages, it would find all the dependencies. Um, it would just go ahead and download them, just as it did when I was installing IPython. Um, and you see it was four minutes and 19 seconds when I ran this. Um, so instead of instead of doing that now, I have a pre-built conda distro or mini conda distribution that I am going to copy instead. <coughs> this should take about 20 seconds. And and when this is and when this is done, we essentially have the um, entire LSST stack, LSST data management uh, stack, and the entire um, LSST simulation stack installed. So if I say now conda list LSST, there we go. So all the packages are in there, and it took about five minutes. Um, it would have taken about five minutes um, on this machine. Now, on your machine, it's going to be completely dominated by bandwidth, by network bandwidth, because it does uh, need to download about uh, three gigabytes of, of binaries and data and things of that sort, but there is no build. Now, next thing. Um, if, if you now try to run something, I don't know, LSST, there's, there's nothing like that. Um, the, the first thing you need to do once you when you want to run uh, run a conda install package is you still have to set up EUPS or you still have to tell your system or source what should I call it load EUPS. Um, the the way you do that is um, if you've installed the, the binaries through um, load LSST before um, the sort of the equivalent of that script here is called setup is called eups setups.sh so you just say source eups setups.sh and at that point you have eups so eups is here you can do eups list you see all the packages again um, the way the conda packaging works right now is essentially it, it wraps itself around the, the eups setup uh, so as to mimic what you would have gotten if you built from eups that is just to make our development easier and it also allows some more advanced features uh, that we might add later on um, and now, for my last trick, I'm just going to demonstrate that this worked. Um, so at this point, you should be able to import conda modules um, and do work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the SimsMath uh, contrib notebooks. And I'm going to open one of those notebooks. And I'm just going to run it. 
Uh, so let's go to tutorials. Um, and I need just one file for this notebook to run. Okay. And now, as it says in the instructions for this notebook, uh, I need to set up sims math to run this command to get uh, sims math on my um, Python path. And I say Jupyter notebook. Start up the notebook. Okay, and so the notebook Here we are. These are all the notebooks. And I'll open this this one here, the, the introduction notebook. And here we go. So now if I hit, if I evaluate this, um, this cell, it tells me which version I'm running. If I evaluate this one, it'll load all these modules. And that's basically the proof that, that all this works. Um, and now I can go run different metrics. And let me just get to the first figure because figures are usually good to convince people that the things worked. And there we go. So we've gone in about uh, 10 minutes from having absolutely nothing on our system, um, including Python, or not even having Python, to having um, a working LSST stack on the system that um, and IPython and IPython notebooks that you can, with modules, that you can load in IPython notebooks. Um, final bit, if you want to now clean up your environment, you can say unsetup sims math. And if you really, really want to clean up your environment, you can also say unsetup eops. And, uh, oops, eops. so unsetup eops undoes that uh, source uh, efsetups.sh line. Um, and so at this point, uh, you have it. If you need to update it, uh, if a new version comes out, you just say conda update, say lsst apps. Um, right now, it'll, it'll tell me that everything's already installed, uh, but it should be as, as easy as that. And then I also have uh, demos on, on how to, or there are examples on how to run uh, the LSSD stack demo, but I think in the interest of time, um, I'm just uh, going to stop here and, and take questions. But the, the basic idea is that uh, what we want to do with this is to make it very easy to get binaries onto, onto your systems. Um, again, these binaries should work on virtually um, any relatively modern Linux out there and on, on uh, Mac OSs. Um, El Capitan doesn't work yet um, because of the way um, Apple changed some things in, in, in uh, OS X 10.11, uh, but it is something that we're working on, and when, uh, when the stack begins working on El Capitan, we'll, we'll let everyone know. So that's it. Uh, one last bit is that um, the, uh, so there will be an, an official sort of LSSD binary distribution as well at some point that will use RPMs and DEBs and, um, and kind of, um, regular packages uh, for, for Linux systems. Uh, but uh, for now, this is one of the ways um, how to use it. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Mario. And I can just tell everybody that you know, I personally stopped building the binaries myself and then both on my Mac and on the Linux machines here at Duke. I'm using the system and it works incredibly well. So we have a, a few minutes for questions. I know the people at Slack have to leave at exactly 2 o'clock, so I'm going to let them ask questions first if they have anybody. If they have any, and I'm going to unmute whoever I muted on the phone, so if that was Slack, you should be able to talk now. Uh, can you hear me, Chris? Yes, I can. Yes. Uh, so just a simple question. So um, to, to install like all of Gelson, this is assuming in 10 minutes would assume you already had Boost and TMB and the other stuff, wouldn't it? Or yes, um, I have binaries for boost and binaries for TMB and, and all of that. So if I say conda list LSST TMB, it should be there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we'll also install all the prerequisites that you need. Right, okay, cool, thanks. Other comments or questions? Especially from Slack people? Any non-Slack people? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I think it's clear. Um, all right, so I think I think that's it. So let's. Uh, it's almost two o'clock, so I think it's time to finish the meeting. So thanks a lot to both KT and Mario for coming to our group and showing us this stuff. I think very useful to a lot of people who actually get started doing work. And we have one homework that came out of this meeting, which is that somebody needs to look at the uh, mapper for um, for simulation data. So that's something we'll start to think about. Okay, so thank every thanks everybody. So I think we'll meet again in two weeks. And I just want to uh, reiterate that if you have any work that you're doing, uh, please let me know. And we'd like this meeting to be a place where people are showing updates of work that they're doing, not just complete complete jobs that they've already finished. It's a good place to get feedback over the last few months doing some work and reporting on it in the meeting. And okay, Chris, so have a good afternoon. And, and Chris, and I'll before, see everybody in the last bit, um, the, the, the kind of stuff that I just demonstrated, this has been our heaviest user. So if you do find problems, please let us know. Um, and Scott Daniel and I'm going to be very happy to follow up and, and fix any problems. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.